Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Jason here today of a solo playthrough for Fromage. This one is a Euro workers placement style game in which you are playing French cheese makers. Look at the adorable workers. You'll be deploying them in different areas and making cheese. As in many of these Euro style games, you are gonna to try to do your actions as efficiently as possible, working with your personal board, making fruit, uh, getting milk out of your livestock, firing off special powers, and accomplishing the different scoring conditions that are in the different zones. The inspirations for this game are viticulture, uh, in the sense that as I place the cheese, depending on where I place them, they will age. And the longer I let them age, the more they will score. In addition, there is a tactile uh, function to this game, kind of like Zolkin the Mayan Calendar. This board is designed to move from turn to turn. And depending on where it is, where you are, where your workers are, different efficiencies are going to be possible. I'm going to be competing against the level one of the corporation, level one of four. I'm going to take it easy on myself today, but I will compete against this bot that's going to populate the field and I have to kind of work around it in order to score my points. So we're going to jump right into a playthrough of Fromage after these channel announcements. We are the One Stop Co-op Shop, a multi-platform gaming empire, and you're One Stop for solo cooperative gaming goodness. Before we get into uh, the tutorial and first round, just wanted to give an overview of what you are seeing here. Uh, the publisher R2i loves to play with componentry. Uh, they had canvas, they have globe trotting, little innovations on what you usually get in a board game. This one, I wouldn't say it blows you away with uh, innovation. You've seen this kind of thing before. I just think it's delivered very well. So you have this board that is going to come in four puzzle pieces and uh, some other pieces in there. Uh, and also, uh, depending on player count, there are going to be different boards that you put in here. So I have the one to two player board because I'm playing solo. So I'm going to stick that in there. Three and four. Uh, the only difference is that more of the space is going to be available to place my cheese. So in terms of an overall turn structure, again, before I really dive into the nitty gritty, uh, on your turn, you are going to place two of your workers or up to two of your workers, uh, one in the cheese making area and one in the resource gathering area. So uh, let's say I wanted to place my worker here. Uh, I could choose one, two or three. And depending on how many resources I gather, that's how long I have to wait in order to get that worker back. Uh, and I can also place somewhere in here as long as I have the requisite worker. So if I wanted to make a, let's say, white cheese, I would have to place the worker here uh, like that. That would be an example of a full turn. Play is simultaneous in the multiplayer, so I don't have to worry about waiting for other people. Everybody can place their workers and do their thing. Once everybody has declared that they are finished with their round, then that is when the turn happens. Yes, if you have a lazy Susan at home, <laughs> it becomes a lot easier. I'm definitely going to try my best to keep this thing centered in the camera. So what determines when I can get my workers back is if uh, the particular worker is facing... Uh, the area that I am playing in. So um, in this case, this worker is now facing the fromagerie, so I can take that worker back. That will, a uh, cheese will play into my scoring, and then that worker is available, as well as my other one, to place in this area. You notice that my uh, yellow worker here is locked out because they are spending a long time gathering berries for me. I would have to wait two full rotations, so that's two full turns in order to get this worker back. So as you can see, now the worker is facing me uh, as I'm here, and I can take this worker back and place them. That is the core of the game, managing that, making sure you have the right workers at the right time in order to do your moves efficiently. So that's the kind of gimmick of the game and how turn structure uh, works overall. Let's get into the nitty gritty of scoring and winning. Most of the scoring in Fromage is going to occur in these four scoring areas. Uh, each turn, players are going to be in charge of their one area and then it's gonna move and then they're going to uh, play in other areas in sequence. 
So uh, as the game goes on, I'm going to be placing my trees. The opponent is going to be placing their trees uh, in the solo. They're just trying to get in my way. In terms of the four zones, slightly different scoring. In the festival, uh, you are rewarded for making an, a line of uh, cheese. So like, uh, it would not benefit me to kind of put cheese over here, cheese over here. Uh, they want me to make a line. I score depending on how long uh, my lines are. Uh, in the villas, uh, VS, something, my French is terrible. Uh, they want to uh, do majority. So you have these tokens over here, uh, which will score depending on whatever the uh, marker says over here. That's going to change from player count. So putting the cheese down here will create majorities. And whoever has the majority in a zone uh, will be able to claim a certain amount of tokens. Spinning this around a little bit. Yes, I like the toy. It is pretty fun. Uh, so we have the fromagerie. Uh, and you score based on distribution, so you want to be on one of the six shelves. And the bistro, uh, you're going to score depending on how many you have and where they are. Uh, bronze, uh, silver, and gold, depending on how long it takes to make the cheese. As you make pairs, that score will increase. So if I just have uh, cheese all over the place, no pairs, I'm going to be uh, at this one. But if I can make one, two, or three pairs, then the, all of my cheese becomes more valuable. So a little bit of a different flavor, quote unquote, uh, as we get into the four zones. Turns my own personal player area. I get my beginning cheeses. I get 15 to place, uh, my three workers, and also some starting resources depending on where uh, this central tile is laid out. So I have the festival facing me currently. So I look at uh, the one left over. Uh, so I get two cows. Oh, that's what that says. And I also get one card. The card is an order card. As I complete these orders, I will gain more points. So here is the whole personal area. Here is the scoring for the uh, order cards. So uh, getting a few of them isn't very lucrative, but if I can get up to five and six, that's seven and 10 points respectively, and then more. Uh, basically what this game wants you to encourage you to do is focus, you know, try to pick, you know, two areas, maybe three to arc up your score uh, as opposed to kind of frittering cheese all over the place. So once you establish uh, something early, then you make that your focus and that's how uh, you can shape your strategy that way. So there's a lot going on here, but I can demonstrate all of that uh, through the first turn of the game. So let's dive in. But before I get started with my turn in earnest, the bot is going to go. They're super simple. So uh, this is the deck of order cards. I pulled the top card, which is a, a soft cheese aged one month bronze uh, in this white area. So uh, take the first uh, cheese. And that is the beginning of the bot score. Along the way, I'm going to be uncovering more thresholds. So as the bot places more cheese, they'll score higher. If they can't place, then I place the card over here and they're going to score three points per uh, order that they fulfill. But for now, they are just going to take their cheese. I get to choose where it goes. Uh, so there are two uh, candidates. I have my eye on this one, as you will see in just a second. So I get to choose to put the bot cheese right there. So this area is blocked. The rest is mine to work with. So here is the opening uh, area, which is the festival. That is where I am closest to. So basically, uh, it's pretty simple. You have three colors of workers. You have uh, yellow, white, and blue. And you have to use those workers in order to make that cheese. Kind of soft, hard, and blue cheese. So I want to begin uh, by using this card. Uh, by satisfying the condition of the card and scoring. I don't have to, but you know I, I see it. Uh, so I might as well take advantage of it. So this is hard cheese, and I, it has to be aged three months. So if I put the worker here, I know that I'm not going to get them back for three turns. So I have to really make sure I'm careful of that. All right, so let's put that cheese uh, down there. And we have a uh, cheese chef in, that is baking it once again. Uh, so that is scoring. That's fine. So, But I'm not going to get them back for a little while. That satisfies this condition. I have set, uh, scored my first order. If I want more orders, that I gather them uh, from the requisite space. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my blue worker and I'm gonna put them on the two. So I'm not gonna see these workers for a little while. The next time I'm only gonna have one worker available, but that's okay, uh, cause the actions are powerful. So I am going to gather two berries and put them in my basket. Now, normally that would be an entire turn of fromage, but I have a whole lot more that I can do in my player board in this particular case. 
So uh, let's just go ahead and break it all down. So first of all, I have these four spaces, uh, which as I unlock them, will be able to uh, they'll fire off special powers. So I went to the festival. When I can make or gather these resources called structures, once again, they come from the middle of the board, I fill them up and then I get a bonus. So in the festival, which I just placed a worker, when I place a cheese there, I would get a cow. I don't have this filled yet. I might try to fill that by the time the festival comes around again. There are other uh, bonuses here that are printed on the base uh, player aid. Uh, there is a whole bunch of other buildings. I mean, there's a ton of them. So uh, as you uh, explore Fromage, you'll be able to explore all sorts of different combinations. This area over here uh, enables me to make extra cheese outside of turn. I have a total of four opportunities to do so. Uh, as I gather livestock and I put them in there and milk them out, uh, I will get access to more and more extra cheese. Uh, only four. So I, once I uh, use one building, then that closes it off for that duration of the game. The beginning of the game, I got two uh, livestock from the board, and I see an opportunity to make uh, something out of it. So I'm going to use those livestock and put them here. They are now functionally out of the game. Uh, that is uh, basically a done deal. So we got the two livestock, and I get to make an extra cheese that is out of order. Once again, that happens four times a game. In addition, I am making some fruited cheese, so I take one of the berries that I gathered and I place it into uh, this area. I did that now because uh, this area scores off adjacency. The bigger the area, uh, the more I score. And as you can see, uh, there are already some that are printed on the board. Uh, this gold means that it's going to be next to two of the printed uh, cheeses. Uh, if it's silver, uh, then it's going to be uh, next to one and the bronze are next to zero. So gold is nice in all cases. So then I'm going to take this cheese, this fruited cheese, and I'm going to place it here, uh, which will give me that adjacency when I get this worker back. That is an adjacency. And I hope when I come back around to, uh, so I should set myself up here for another fruited cheese and then uh, going on down the line. Now, I might want to focus on fruited cheese because if I open this specialty cheese shop, I get extra points depending on how much of these that I score. In addition to the multiplier effect over here, so that's something to look out for. Two sources of scoring and the order is another source of scoring. You get one point for every two unused resources. Uh, that's just uh, for a throwaway <laughs> uh, with that to kind of boost up your point score for, with unused stuff. Plus the four zones, that is all the scoring that you need to know in Fromage. And that's basically everything that you need to know to get started. Uh, so let's dive in. And now we pass turn and now the lazy Susan kicks in. Uh, we shuffle uh, everything around, getting this rotated. Uh, neither of these figures are pointing at the current uh, area. So if you kind of want to know a shorthand of when you're going to get back your worker, just look at where it's pointing. So this worker is going to come back. They're pointed towards uh, the bistro. So I'm going to get them back uh, when this comes around. Same thing with this worker, which is pointed at the villas. Turn number two. First, we go with the bot. They are going to uh, make some abondance. I, yeah, I'm not going to pronounce this stuff. Abundance. <laughs> I'll do the English. Uh, so it says to put some hard cheese, which is yellow, age two months, uh, at an available space. I only see an available space. This happens to be kind of laid out one month, two months, uh, three months, uh, bronze, silver, and gold. So they are going to take up a space over here, which uh, kind of tells me what to do uh, if I want to uh, get the scoring over here of putting things in all six which I do, why not? Uh, so let's go ahead and take my one worker, which is not bad, uh, that I only have one worker, I'll get him back. I'm gonna put my cheese there. Uh, as you can see, uh, there is a jam symbol on there, so I have to use that fruit in order to uh, get that going. And that's a good thing because you don't want to load up on one side, which is a bunch of zeros. <laughs> uh, you want to distribute them equally to maximize that score. Used all my stuff. You see it's a much faster turn. And that's how uh, games of fromage are going to go. Uh, you're going to have turns where you have to think a lot, but then you zip through other ones and get back to your main stuff. Do y'all need me to show the turn every time? I think you get the point. I'm uh, just going to focus on my play area from here on in. I have one worker that is facing towards the bistro. They come back to me, so I have one action to take. 
But before I do that, let's see where the bot goes. The bot makes some Sampolan, a delectably smooth, mild, comforting. I haven't read the flavor text on them, but they all have flavor text. Uh, soft cheese, age one month in the white. So that would be right there. I think that's the only candidate. Don't have to worry about that because I'm not going to go into this area right now. I don't feel prepared for it. So the question is, how many cards do I want? How many order cards? So let me show the bigger board as a strategy thing. So I only have the one worker. I am getting both of my workers back next turn. They're both pointed towards uh, the area control deal. So that affects my play this turn. If I uh, were to uh, place myself on the one that I'd be getting three workers back at once, it's actually very inefficient because you can only, uh, at least in the basic setup, uh, play two workers in a turn. So I can uh, place it on the more lucrative space, two workers, get these two workers back uh, next turn, and then the turn after, get this worker. That is a perfect example of how you want to think about this game uh, in terms of getting those workers back at just the right time for maximum efficiency. So let's go ahead and place that worker on the two, and I'm going to make uh, myself or get myself two orders. So we have Roquefort, uh, tingly on the tongue, delightfully piquant. Uh, which is uh, gold. Oh, they're both gold. Oh, I may not complete both of these. And we also have, oh, that's, there's no chance. <laughs> Chime in in the comments if you know how to pronounce this. Uh, but it is creamy, salty, heart-shaped delight. So I got two more orders. Not gonna, I'm basically gonna ignore the bistro. Nice thing about this game, it's quick, so you make those decisions and you go for it. So now I'm gonna get my two workers back and I am ready to roll. The bot is going to place some uh, Shaurus. Oh, boy. <laughs> Delight, delicate, creamy with a hazelnut finish uh, in uh, a silver, which is age two months, uh, a white space. So um, is up oh, there it is uh, right up top over here in the corner, uh, although uh, claiming these two areas uh, right here. So, again, majorities. So I want to, uh, basically with this area, if I'm not going to go for it, I at least want to place enough where I get in the bot's way and I don't give them easy access to points. So, uh, you know, if we both place here, then the tiebreaker, you know, nothing happens, kind of like equal. Uh, so I want to try to, you know, at least get in the bot's way. And I happen to have this order to complete so I can kill two birds with one stone, the essence of the game. So uh, we are going to place a uh, cheese here. And a white worker there, or a white um, specialist uh, right here. And that will score me this uh, card right there. And that is two orders finished. And right now, so I have a, a right we have equal majority, so nobody will get these. However, I've placed in this gold, so now I have some claim in this area. So if the bot does not go there, then I would claim uh, this one and the scoring. Uh, is, as I said before, right down here. And this worker doesn't have much to do. I do want them available for the festival. So I'm just going to go ahead and put them right here. Uh, they are going to get me one uh, livestock from the market. Uh, there is no function between like cows and goats and sheep and all that. Uh, so they're just a fun little icons. Back to the festival, which is my main focus for this game. And I have two workers that are pointed towards me coming back. So, uh, first of all, we have to deal with what the bot is going to hand out. They are going to hand out uh, some mar mo 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 uh, there you go, sorry, uh, oily with aggressive flavor, nicknamed Old Stinker. Ugh. And it is a rather stinky placement as well because it is going to hem me in a little bit. Uh, so I'm blocked off of going this way. They don't score these, the bot doesn't. It's baked into their uh, natural scoring, but they are getting in my way. So that means I have one place to go. I could go up here, but that, you know, there's no else to go because that's blocked off in the one and two player. Got to make down here, even though this is gold, I think that's worth it. I don't think I showed this before, but I got it when I went to the fromagerie. Uh, so I will show you how that all happened when I, when I get there. Uh, but I am going to use this as a uh, fruited uh, cheese and put that into the gold area. Now I have a nice group of six, which is 12 points right there. I'm that much closer to maximum and I can keep scoring. I can make this as big as I want, adding five points. I might really want to focus on this, uh, but I like where I am for now.
And also right now, I have no other worker that is going to be available to me in the next base. That's not killer, but it is something to consider. So I am going to just replace the berry that I got. So you see how convenient this is? The workers are just pointed right at you. I <laughs> love the uh, small little uh, attention to detail here. So let's see what the bot does to me now. Uh, they are going to make this cheese, which is bold and pungent with a moist texture. Oh, uh, what? Jason, stop trying to pronounce it. <laughs> Don't even try. Uh, they are going to place it in a, a cheese that is blue and pointed upward. So it's two, aged two months. So that's right here. Closing this down. If I want to get the 20 points, I better get on my horse. Hmm. All right. Uh, but... I see an opportunity to do some scoring, even though it comes at a high cost. That is the push and pull of the game. Uh, okay, so another gold. I ended up using uh, my cards, those gold cards. Hopefully this works out. So I'm going to make this Roquefort uh, by putting that right there. And I happen to have a blue worker free. So that is going to be some scoring right now. I've scored, uh, what is that? Uh, two points for being in two different areas. We're going to improve that along the way. And I get two resources that don't match. So that is going to be uh, that structure right there and this berry. So I think, I, I think I've missed the window to get make these. Here is just an open space to put a worker and get uh, um, another, uh, in this particular case, shelter uh, or structure. Uh, this would get me extra cards. Uh, order cards. This would uh, allow me to get extra cows when I place in the festival. I've already placed in the festival twice, so uh, kind of missed the boat there. However, there's an end game one, and I'm happy to be getting a lot of uh, these, which is uh, the fruited ones. So let me load up on fruit. Hopefully, I can fill this along the way. I don't have to declare this now, but why not? I think we're just going to do that and get four more structures so I can qualify for this and get some extra points that way. Get my worker back that is pointed here. I'm only using one worker, uh, partly because, I mean, look at the uh, orders that I fulfilled, all gold. <laughs> so hopefully all that scoring makes up for the lack of action economy. I'm not having anything to do with the bistro. So even, you know, getting a couple here doesn't really do anything for me. So let's just go ahead and get some more orders. Uh, come on, something cheap. Yep, there we go. We got the uh, Croton, the Chavignol, and the Cantal June. I, I'm only doing this for the benefit of the entertainment of the peoples. Uh, and there are the descriptions right there. They're both the same kind of cheese, bronze, uh, yellow, uh, which I should be set up for next turn. Let's see. And oh, by the way, this doesn't really matter, but this was the bot's turn. They are going to place uh, in the yellow. Uh, they're going to place a pair right there. doesn't even matter. I can choose, but I'm ignoring uh, both of what's going on here. And this will matter. So let's go ahead and make sure we do that. Another... Uh, white that is pointed. We got this one over here and over here. So now I can decide. I have majority here. Uh, so I don't want them to have that. So I'm just going to put that there. Uh, I'll let them have this less uh, lucrative one. So that's a little bit of the decision space here in the game. So I have these two orders right now. The only uh, one that could fulfill this order is right here, which is a very suboptimal space. It's off in the middle of nowhere. The token isn't that lucrative. So I'm just going to hold off on that for a second. And another part of the strat is knowing when to proc your stuff. I get one worker back. I don't feel the need to challenge too many areas. And I see an opportunity with the cow. So I'm going to place this in the three and get myself three livestock. That makes four in my uh, little area over here. Uh, five would be wild. That'd be nice to build up, but I think I have a use for this four. See if that all works out for me. Y'all see what I'm doing, right? This is my area and I'm making sure that I have workers to go in here. Uh, so I have two workers back and they are going to go to town, but first, Let's see what the bot has in store for me. We got some also, oh, oh, oh boy, uh, subtly sweet, complex Basque to treasure, like Basque cheese, hard cheese, aged two months. Uh, so the only place for that is there. Wrong one. Nice and out of the way. Let's make sure the bot does not get in my way. Look what I did, people. <laughs> I know the festival is my main area, so I wanted to make sure my, my workers are pointed there. That's actually really satisfying to, for that all to come together. So let's show this all on the camera at once. 
Got to place two cheeses, uh, one via the livestock. Got to put them there into the gold. That gets that into this uh, golden jam uh, space right there. So that is going to move over into jam. Uh, so that was with the livestock. That's why I did that uh, with the uh, gold worker. And then uh, let's go ahead and use my blue worker uh, to place another jam space right there in the bronze. So look at that. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, so that is seven, 15 plus one is five. And then everything after that is gonna be five, 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 five. So this is uh, my main engine of scoring for now. And this one right here, six points does not hurt either. Jam is one of the things that I am doing in order to uh, maximize my score. So let's go ahead and uh, get two more berries. What a turn in the festival. Love it. All right, let me show off a little bit more of the board. Uh, I have used uh, nine pieces of cheese. So has the bot. So I'm kind of keeping even with them, especially after that last turn. So uh, let's go ahead and... Check out what the bot has going on. They are going to put in uh, age two months hard cheese with the Emontel. That's covered. So if it's covered, the bot is going to score it as three points. So I don't have to worry about the bot putting on extra cheese there. I only have the one worker. These two workers are going to come back when I have this bistro going on over here. I have a choice. Uh, I can continue to uh, kind of populate this area. The only one I'd really want to do is... Uh, that one, uh, maybe I want to go all the way up here uh, because I'm going to get two workers back and they're going to be primed and ready for the festival. That is enticing. Or I could use this worker to go here and get some specialty work, uh, specialty stuff, uh, Get make my way towards building that multiplier for the jam buildings and have them available for the festival. There are a lot of choices I need to make. I think I could make more hay over here. So uh, forget the structure. Looks like I'm going to say goodbye to that. Uh, but instead, I'm going to go for the three points. And I already have one, two, three over here. That gets me five points. Another would get me nine, which is now would be uh, easy because they're kind of all open. Uh, so let's just go ahead and focus on the fromagerie uh, and the festival for now. That's where I'm going to get most of my points. Nope, I'm not going to lift that up. Back to the bistro, the Persil de Ch Oh, boy. Uh, a <laughs> fatty texture with a bright acidity. Uh, age two months, some blue cheese. Uh, the bot is placing more and more of its stuff uh, over there. So they uh, believe that is the only place where they can play it. That's fine. As you can see, it's gotten that's better threshold. Uh, if it gets rid of all of it, it's going to increase its threshold and eventually end the game or prompt the end game. So I need to get on my horse and place my cheese. So this is an unfortunate misplay by me. Uh, I managed to get two workers back, but into an area where I'm just not interested. I don't have anything built up. So let's make the best of a not a great situation. So we are going to put gold over here. Uh, so that is worth no points. I have no pairs and gold is worth zero as long as I have no pairs. But this is open to me in case I want to open a pair later and I complete an order. Uh, so that is valuable because that gets me to four orders uh, and that is starting to get me some point scoring. And uh, I'm, I have this uh, over here. Do I want to get this into one or two? Um, do I want them back basically? Do I want them back immediately for the uh, France area or do I want to uh, delay them and have them available for the festival? Let's go ahead and get two. I'm gonna go get froggy. If I get six, that's 10 points. If I can fulfill two more orders, give myself the best chance for that. A white uh, aged one month and a gold aged three months. Okay, a little bit of variety. I think I can work with that. So I've done a decent job of stymieing the bot over here. Uh, let's see if I can make that continue to work. Probably not. Uh, so they are gonna make uh, blue cheese aged two month blue the gay. Blue the gay? The, okay. <laughs> Uh, distinctly nutty and smells of damp earth. Uh, so they are going to put the and theirs in there. Well, they could put it either here and here. Uh, I mean, the, I do not want them to get this majority. So this is this is available. I'm going to put them right here. It's going to cover up this jam space. Uh, I got to make choices. I'd rather just ha them have that. So I get back the one uh, 
gold worker or yellow worker, whatever you want to call it, and they can do something. Uh, do they want to go for some livestock, which you might be getting a little bit late in the game for that? Or, so this is a beautiful move right here. That is the, the beauty of having flexibility in the order cards, getting a lot done. So let's go ahead and put them there. Another <laughs> gold cheese. That gives me influence in all of these areas. So we got here, here, and here. So this would be uh, belong to the bot, but right now I'm going to uh, block them off. And I give myself the chance to get this token. So right now, am I getting both tokens? Uh, I'm, I'm negating this one and getting this one right now. And also, uh, well, <laughs> this one is the important one. And I'm fulfilling another order. The... I've never filled this many gold orders in the game. That brings me up to uh, five cards completed, which is a really nice place to be. Speaking of nice place to be, my huge scoring cluster and both of my, or two workers, that will be coming back to me. Uh, let's see what the bot does. The bot is going to place in a, a gold blue, which I wasn't going to use gold, uh, so that is not bad. Kind of being on the outskirts, which is exactly uh, where I want them to be. That's beautiful. So let's go ahead and place this cheese right here. Extend that a little bit. Include this in my zone. So this is all going to score for me. Boy, that uh, really worked out awesome. And why not? Uh, because they're there. Uh, they are going to get me a, another fruit. I may not be able to use all this fruit, uh, but at least it's good to have. In fact, the way things are looking, I might not use the fruit. I'm going to try. I have one place that I have uh, identified. Let's see if it remains open to me. All right. So first of all, the bot is going to place in uh, the, the gold. Uh, this is the one month. So I don't have a gold worker on me, so it doesn't really matter. So they are going to cover that up. I have one worker coming back to me. Uh, they are going to go down here. So that covers four shelves, and I really can't make anything else. Uh, so four shelves is pretty good for nine. And another order, this Brie. I know how to pronounce Brie. Tell me that I don't know how to pronounce Brie in the, <laughs> in the uh, comments, really. Uh, all right, so that gets me one, two, three, four, five, six orders for 10 points. That is a nice little bonus along with everything else I have going on. All right, the bot is probably going to place. Uh, they have, yep, they are going to go up top to the gold. Uh, the gold is right over there. So they have one more cheese to place, and hopefully I will have one more cheese to place. I have two workers coming back to me. Once again, two workers uh, coming into the bistro. Not my favorite move, but what are you going to do? But I do have some good stuff coming. Uh, this is a fruit that is a little multiplier that I'm going to put in there. Uh, that goes right there. That makes a pair. So that makes this a little bit more lucrative. That's nice. And why not for the lulls, as they say? Uh, more scoring is always good. And I, and I have a fair feeling that's going to be one turn left. So let's just pull one card. Does that make sense? Uh, nah. Uh, let's go ahead. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to have a use for the resource pull. So let's go ahead and pull two cards. Actually, should I just pull three? <laughs> sure. I'm never going to see you again. Yeah. What am I doing? Three cards. Uh, all right. We have uh, different uh, cards. We have some for blue. Uh, I might be able to use one of these blues. Oh man. Let's check that out. See what's possible. So the bot is finally uh, cheesing me off. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, cheesing me off. Look what I did. Uh, blue cheese aged one month. This is their final uh, placement, uh, and they are going to place it in the only area where they can. Why are they cheesing me off? Because they got the majority uh, back, or they, they tied for majority, and they're denying me this very lucrative token. Uh, hopefully, I have other things that can balance that out. So they've triggered the last round of the game. Uh, they have no more tokens. So I have one more token, and I am going to fulfill. Boom, right there. Uh, I got myself, I was able to save myself a uh, blue, uh, get them going right here, which is why I wasn't afraid to place that white, uh, and got some majority, at least a little bit of majority, back for this one. And most importantly, I have completed one last quest. Boom. 
And because that was fruited cheese, I can balance that out a little bit and make a nice multiplier. That is 12 points that you're looking at right there. All told, with everything going on, I got 85 points. Fantastic. Uh, so I did end up getting the token over here. One, two, three, that uh, five pointer and a couple of others. The bot got a lonely one. Uh, and uh, they bought, they barely scored off of this because uh, I had not a lot on the board. The board, bot was able to place a lot, so they didn't get a lot of cards. Uh, so they didn't, they didn't get much. <laughs> they barely crested 50. I go, scored over 80. Main source of my points obviously was over here. So uh, this was 15. Uh, this is 7. I had 11, a group of 11. So that's uh, plus 20 points right there. Boom. Uh, and, you know, just a lot of other stuff over here, getting a lot of um, cards, etc. was great. As you can see, there's different paths to scoring. So if I wanted to, I could have spent the early game filling out my powers and taking advantage of that. And I showed you the tiles. There's plenty of other tiles to use. I also could have played, obviously, a harder bot uh, that uses multiple uh, colors, not just the one, a little bit of a longer game, and uh, higher point thresholds. Uh, Etc. So there is plenty of variety, plenty of challenge in here. Uh, this was a nice demo of the easy solo mode so that you get a feel for what you're getting with Fromage. This is Jace with the One Stop Co-op Shop. Morning, we'll see you at the next stop.